Not-so-subtle wordage invites one to open the box and find an almost completely assembled racing quad. The first thing that catches my eye is the helicopter-like landing skids, bracketing the twin Velcro battery straps. I also like the integrated battery power connector. Smoke-colored plastic covers the numerous LED running lights. The four speed controllers are also under protective covers. The whole frame is wrapped in multiple layers of stiff foam. Hopefully it will prove to be as durable as it looks. There is a painted carbon subframe on top that protects the electronics and provides a vibration isolation mount for a secondary camera. In the parts bag, are a set of 5x3 props, receiver wiring harness, and a few other miscellaneous accessories. A 12-page manual outlines how to set up the RXD 250's controller software and provides an exploded diagram. First, the wiring harness is plugged into the receiver, which needs to be a minimum of 5 channels. I did find it fairly difficult to plug the harness into the controller board with the top frame attached. So by removing all but one screw from the top frame, I was able to easily swing it out of the way. There are also two antenna tubes provided for routing the receiver's antenna. The RxD 250's CC3D controller must be configured to your transmitter by following the outlined steps. First install the Libra Pilot software by clicking on the download link for your computer's operating system. I chose all default settings for the installation. Be sure to install the COM port drivers as well. Once installed, launch the Libra Pilot software at which point you can connect the RxD controller to the computer's USB port. Select the configuration button and then the input icon on the left. Before proceeding with the setup, be sure to turn on the transmitter and power up the quad, otherwise the setup will not work. Then start the setup wizard and simply follow the on-screen instructions. You will be required to move the appropriate controls when prompted. Visual cues make setup nearly foolproof. Don't forget to set up the monitor output channels as suggested and pick an army sequence to your liking. Finally, the RC input tab lets you monitor the controller responses to confirm the setup. This was my first time setting up a CC3D controller, and I had no issues, once I realized I needed to have the transmitter on. There are what seems to be an overwhelming amount of options for the controller, but I didn't need to change anything else in order to start flying. For the FPV camera, I use Ryze's own 120 degree field of view 600 TVL CMOS camera. The included camera mount is designed to fit this type of camera, except that I needed to trim the opening in the plastic in order to fit the protrusions of a small lens screw. Two screws are included to keep the camera in place. 
The camera mount keys into place quite nicely between the frame and the body. In the rear, there is a JST power connector lead and a nice open space for the video transmitter. Lastly, attach the props, making sure the rotation is correct and we are ready to go. Stay tuned for part two, where I kinda try not to break it.